Hey everybody, today I want to share with you a mistake that I made here recently replacing a big wide connector on a drone circuit board. This is a connector off of the gimbal board on what I believe to be a DJI Mavic 2 Enterprise drone. And just look at how that thing is assembled. Do you all see what I'm seeing right now? Because if you do, I didn't see this whenever I originally started the job. Would you just look at the ring that goes around this connector? You see that? We have a grounded ring that goes around that connector and it snuggles right up next to all the pins. So this being a drone circuit board and me wanting to make sure it's soldered extra good, I fluffed up all the pads really well, floated this thing down on the board and was like, oh, it looks great. To the naked eye, it looked absolutely beautiful, but then looking at it under the microscope, you can see that not only did it wind up bridging this connector all in the heck all over the place here, but it actually pulled solder up in between that ground ring and all of the pins. It was just like a kick in the stomach. I installed this connector just like I would any other big old long FPC connector. And on iPhones, this works out fabulously. But on this particular board right here, it really just didn't work out worth a darn. So as you can imagine that this was quite the challenge. There's absolutely no room to get a soldering iron in along this side. So I was pretty well forced to do it with hot air. But also if I was to try to solder these pins along the sides and if the solder would have pulled up the pin just a little bit too far it would ride up the pin and find itself right here between this grounded metal bracket and the pin itself and that is just completely nuts I've never seen a connector put together this way. So I apologize for not doing this on video for you all, but this was pretty stressful. These, these connectors are having to come all the way from China and it's like a $20 connector, but most of all, the customer had included the connector to do this job. And I had to tell him, hey, I put the connector on your board and I botched it and now I have to wait on another connector. So I am pleased to say that this thing is installed today and it turned out beautiful. And if you look really close, you'll see that we have like a full kilometer of space now between that metal bracket and those pins. And uh, yeah, it's a beautiful looking connector now, but Boy, it didn't come without challenge. Some of the pads are just a smidgen under wetted, like that one right there. But I really had to decide if I was gonna accept having a very, very small amount of solder on the pads, or if I was going to botch another connector. So to do this, I wound up putting just as much solder on the pads as surface tension would draw up. You know, I just heated the board up and I took a blob of solder and just went across the pads and let each pad have one tiny little bubble of solder on top of it. And I had to settle with that because, well, if I would have used any more, I risked damaging another connector. And if there was any more solder on these pads, it would wind up bridging to that outer ground ring. So this isn't a connector that you can easily just go around and solder with a iron because there, you know, one side of it you can't even get to. But if you did solder to that with an iron, just a little bit too much flux, a tiny little bit too much touchy with too much solder on the tip and wham, wasted connector. That is the craziest connector that I've ever seen. And I'm here to tell you, I've installed a lot of connectors, but the way this is installed with that grounded ring around it, that makes this really challenging. So. That's it for now, everybody. I will see you in the next video. If you like my videos, please give me a thumbs up and uh, I'll talk to you soon. Have a good day.